Hey guys, and welcome to this edition of Scruff's Garage. Uh, so today's video, I wanted to show you the rear view camera that I added to my car trailer. Uh, so, you know, for me, I'm toying with my Jeep Gladiator. And even after adding uh, some sad mirror extensions, I still can't see around the trailer uh, particularly well. So I went back and added this rear view uh, camera. Uh, so there's a camera that mounts in the back of the trailer, and then of course it uh, feeds a signal to a monitor uh, here in the cab of the truck. And these work great. I mean, obviously I'm towing with a, a Jeep Gladiator, but if you've got a motor home or anything you need to see behind, uh, these are a really nice addition. So I, I thought I'd just take a moment, at least tell you what uh, I bought <clears throat> and my experience with it. And then as you're shopping, there are just a ton of these things out on Amazon and different uh, retailers, you can get these things. So for me, my primary goal with this wasn't so much uh, for the purpose of backing up. You can wire it so that it, it comes on only when you're in reverse, or you can wire it uh, as I have. Um, it's on all the time, so it's more of a rear view monitor. Um, because when I was trying to change lanes, in traffic, a lot of times you can't see if a car is in your blind spot. So this helps me see if there's a car that's come up behind me that maybe I haven't seen. I always try to run my my uh, turn signals for a few seconds before I get over. But even that said, it's nice to be able to see what's behind you. Now trying to back up strictly from this is a little tricky. Uh, your depth perception, because you, you can't actually, obviously you don't see the trailer uh, itself in this so you don't have a point of reference uh, for your trailer I mean it's nice to see what's behind you so that you don't back into another vehicle or certainly if you've got kids and they leave their bikes out or something like that uh, so for me the biggest component is just to be able to see behind me when I'm on the highway and for that purpose it has worked out exceptionally well I really like this so, um, a couple of things to keep in mind. So, I bought a brand called Yakri, but it's their wireless backup camera system. Um, it has a pretty decent um, field of view. This is a, a 720p uh, resolution. I would not go any lower than this, um, particularly when you're driving, right? You're focused on what's out ahead of you. You just want to be able to glance over uh, quickly. If it's all grainy because it's a low resolution uh, video feed, it just makes it hard to see. Um, I would also recommend getting as large of a monitor as you can fit without it becoming a distraction, uh, you know, on the windshield. So obviously, I'm in a Jeep Gladiator or a Wrangler. Do not have a particularly large uh, windshield. If you're in a, a larger vehicle and if 250 or 350 or something like that you may have some more real estate to deal with um, I would say get the largest camera I'm sorry largest monitor uh, screen that you can get that doesn't uh, look out of place or block your your field of vision uh, when you're driving this also has a night mode uh, and it switches automatically you don't have to do anything and it's kind of nice so when a car comes up behind you so if you're just driving and it's dark out, it goes into like a night vision so that you can see. If a car comes up behind you with the really bright lights, it automatically kind of adjusts the contrast so it doesn't get washed out because of the, the headlights. And then after the car goes around you or whatever, it goes back to its normal night vision. And so from that perspective, I've been really happy with it. Um, it it's worked out particularly well. One other thing to consider when you're looking at these is their range of transmission. So obviously it has like the, the little antenna. And I'm trying to remember what this particular camera was rated at. I want to say 40, 50 feet, something like that. But obviously if you're mounting, the, the, the camera mounts to the very back of the trailer. And then of course the cab here. Um, so if you've got a, I've got a 16 foot trailer. Plus, you know, say maybe three foot for the, the length of the tongue. And then it's maybe another 15 feet from, you know, the back of the hitch to the dash. Could be 35 feet or better, depending on the, the size of your vehicle. For some of them, they rate them at, say, like 
35 feet. And to me, that's just cutting it a little too close. If you get too far out of range, uh, <clears throat> it won't transmit very well. Um, I don't know if you can see. So on mine, it shows me the, the signal strength from the, the camera, which has a, a transmitter built into it. So I've got a really good signal. I've never had any issue. But if you had a really long, if you had a motorhome and you were towing a trailer behind it, a car trailer or something like that, you may really need some pretty good distance. So as you're searching, let that be one of the features you are paying attention to. So resolution, screen size, and the range that it can operate at. Um, if it's out too far, you may have some, some problems. You can buy a a signal repeater and you could mount like an extension little antenna on the maybe towards the front of the trailer or something like that so there are there are still some solutions if you need to do that but buying a camera that can has a good range of transmitting the signal up front uh, will make things a lot better so this particular unit did not come with a, a windshield mount which is what I wanted I'll show you It did include this, which I guess is intended to be, um, came with a, an adhesive back so that you could stick it to a, a flat dash or something like that. Um, obviously, I've got the, the leather trim, so I didn't want to glue something like this to my dash. But what was really nice, so this company, as a thank you in the box, they have like a little card and it says, if you'll send them an email, they have a handful of different gifts that they'll send you you can get maybe like an extra monitor uh, but one of the options was a, a windshield mount if i can show you that um, and i just sent them an email i said I, I wanted the windshield mount you give them your address and they ship it to you completely free which is a pretty sweet arrangement um so that it worked out really well even though i mean to me it seems like they should have just come with a, a windshield mount but the fact that they give it to you for free and send it to you for free, um, I can't complain. And the, the windshield mount, uh, well, I don't have it particularly. I just stuck it up here so, so you guys could see. But it works out pretty well. You, you know, if you're going to go Dukes of Hazard style and jump something, then maybe it's a little bouncy. But for normal towing applications on the highway, it's worked out really well. So I'll take you back to the trailer. Um, installation is really simple. But I'll show you how I set it up. Obviously, your trailer could be a little different, so it's not necessarily a how-to. But just to give you an overview, if you want to wire it um, to come on on all the time. So, like, for this one, it's on right now. I'm hooked up to my trailer, and I have my, my headlight switch on. So that's how your trailer gets power. So uh, I'll walk you to the back and show you the rest of it. Uh, one other thing I'll point out. So this has its own power source which comes from your cigarette lighter auxiliary light port uh, or power outlet uh, here on the dash. And it has like a little on off switch. The Jeep Mopar uh, trailer brake controller uh, mounts in this location. And even though, so it wasn't out when I added my, my Red Arc uh, trailer brake controller. If you, if you look, I've got another video on how I fabricated this panel and install the trailer brake controller but I didn't want to lose this power outlet and this is a good example of you know most of your media stuff plugs in over there to so charging phones and, and stuff like that not a big deal but having this power outlet to run something like this rear camera uh, is something that, to think about if you're planning on adding a trailer brake controller think about how you plan to power uh, something like this so I've still got the power outlet uh, here on the dash and so it works out really well to power the screen. Um, and also point out the screen has these little shields on it to help um, block some of the, the light so you get a nice contrast and don't get too much of a glare. Okay, so here's a look from the back of the trailer. You can see I mounted it at the top of the trailer and it's angled downward so that you get a good field of vision and if we zoom in, you can see there's a, uh, a mounting screw there. There's a little bracket here that it mounts on. And then it has a antenna on the back. So the this has the camera and a transmitter in it. 
So everything that you need is contained in this. The only thing you, you need at this point is to get power to it. Um, so I'll show you from the inside how we wire it, but you can see back there, um, drill one small hole to run the power wire inside the, uh, the trailer. Uh, but the rest of it out here is self-contained and this is a, a waterproof metal housing so I think it should hold up uh, pretty well. Okay, so we're at the back of the trailer. I'll step back. So typically you've got a couple little wood panels here. So I took uh, that one down so that you can see the wiring back here. But all the reverse lights and the rear lights and that sort of thing uh, this is where a lot of the, the wiring will run So if you can see right there where my finger is that's where I drilled the small hole to pass the Wiring for the camera. So we just need power and a ground and They provide some wire taps for you So you'll just need to identify which of these wires is a hot wire so a lot of times you can just take a test light so turn on power to your trailer and if you want it to come on just when you have the running lights on, turn on your running lights and then you can come back here and see what is lit up or you can use a test light on this wire and make sure that's the wire that's getting power with your running lights. If you want it to only come on when you put it in reverse, then you'll need to identify looking at the back of your trailer where are your reverse lights on the back of the trailer and where's the wiring going to those and then tap into the wire feeding the reverse lights and this obviously it's a very low amperage draw so for me I wanted it to run all the time so I put my wire tap on the wire that gets power when the running lights come on and then uh, I just grounded it uh, here on the metal frame now uh, the way they provide this to you uh, it's it has a different uh, like almost a butt connector style, but it's it's much larger. It's you know if that's a eighth of an inch, it's a, a quarter or three eighths or something like that. So I thought, well, I don't want to drill that large of a hole uh, if I don't have to. So I clip the end of it off and then just strip the the little wires out. The one drawback to that, <clears throat> the wires on the inside of it are a extremely small gauge wire and so uh, crimping a uh, a terminal end on it was a bit difficult because it's like three hair strands of copper uh, inside small wires like that so I'm not sure I would do that again but I also didn't have to had you know they give you this big spool of wire because they don't know how far you've got to run uh, with your wiring so instead of having an, you know an extra 10 feet of wire trying to stuff it back here I just clipped it to to what I needed so just something to think about if you do decide to clip the end just pass the bare wire through these wires are, are very thin uh, and it's a little tricky to crimp a terminal on it but obviously can be done and then I just filled obviously I, I didn't drill that hardly any larger than the wire passing through, but also put some clear silicone around it. That way I don't have any water leaks uh, coming in um, and preventing things from rusting if some bare metal or something like that in the back. Um, so it just taps in there. So overall, it's a really simple installation and makes a really big difference uh, in your ability to tow. So uh, I hope this helps. If you have any questions, if you're looking at um, trailer rear camera options, um, hit me up. If you have any questions, I hope, you know, any way that I can. I'm towing an eight and a half by 16 trailer, and it's just very difficult to see around it. So to me, it, I spent like a hundred bucks on that, that rear camera setup, and it's worth every penny. Uh, so if you're on the fence about it, just do it, uh, you'll, you'll really like it. So hope this helps. If you have any questions, hit me up. As always, like and comment and subscribe, and we'll see you next time here on Scrubs Garage.